the first Gnostic Church of Christ, this is video two. We are continuing the read and commentary, the Gospel of the Egyptians. In our last video, we went over the emanation systematically, starting from the great invisible spirit, also known often as the Father or the Monad, that then emanated the three known as the Father, the Mother, the Son, and that brought about the infinite living silence or the essence of the living waters and the holy light. Then brought about the three that followed, which included Son, Mother, and Father, under the aeons of the aeons, also known as Domadon Doxomadon, that also came forth. And Domadon Doxomadon, you could think of as the formula to all emanation and creation. Some might consider it hermetic principles, others may consider it mathematical in nature, others may simply call it God, but it's the very essence of what brings about all things. Domadon, Doxomadon, through the aeon of the aeons. The principal aeon, of course, being the father. The father is both the monad, also is the father of the three, father, mother, son, and also the father aeon, meaning the one that brings about all original concepts, ideas, thoughts, etc., to bring about will. Then from there, we went into the Oddod, which are the thrice male child coming forth, the thrice male child being represented on two levels, on the level of the three different, you could think of them as realms or universes, the first being the Pleuromic universe, uh, and then the second being the Holy Souls realm, and third being the material realm that we also call Konomic realm, we currently reside as corporal flesh beings. And from there, the thrice male can also be thought of as the tripart part of the human, uh, be, meaning the perfect human, uh, the intermediary human, which would be the spiritual and the soul-oriented human, and lastly, the flesh-oriented human. And then from there, finally, wrapped up with the three powers, the three Ogdads, that the Father, through his providence, brought forth from his bosom. He brought them forth at that place. So we're going to pick up from there, going into how everything was brought about via utterance. So it's written here, Domadon dox Amadon, came forth, the aeon of the aeons. Again, recall that aeon are essentially abstract ideas, concepts that are the, you could think of them as ingredients to the recipe of all of emanation. Examples of that might be life, uh, divinity, uh, word, glory, power, so forth and so on. And the throne, which is in him. The throne being attributed or compared to the seat of power. And that is reminding you that the ionic power is within all of us. It is within the father, the mother, the son, Sophia, as well as all human beings. For some human beings, it's dormant. For others, they have gnosis and they're aware and awake to that throne or the power within, which is the Christ within, the hope of glory, and the powers which surround him, the glories and the incorruptions, meaning that you have all power from the aeons and even to call forth all the guides, angels that you need. They are incorruptible, meaning they are eternal. The father of the great light who came forth from the silence. And recall, there are two states, silence, and uh, there is within the silence, that is the repose, and then the movement, or the motion, which is the sound, the word. He is the great Dexamedon, Aeon, and that's speaking about the Father, the great light, who came forth from the silence, meaning it's unutterable. It is something that is brought about through thought, in which the thrice male child rests. So within the Father, the concept of mankind's three-part nature rests within, originally, within the Father. And the throne of his power, meaning the power within him, was established in it, meaning within all of us. This one, on which his unrevealable name is inscribed. So think of it as uh, an infinite puzzle. We each are a puzzle piece, and the whole of that puzzle piece makes up the full picture of who the Father is. But because it's infinite in terms of emanation, forever bringing about newer and newer through the Son and being carried by the Daughter into the infinite chaos, new emanations, 
then it's never totally revealed, the face or name of the Father. On the tablet, dot, 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 it's not uh, known what was being written here in the script. One is the Word, and that, of course, is the Word made flesh is the Christ, the Father of the light of everything, he who came forth from the silence. And it keeps referring to the Father coming forth from the silence, meaning the essence of the original Father, the monad, is not going to be coming from somebody who tells you who the Father is, but they will come as a messenger, such as Christ had come, as an example, as a proxy, if you will, of the Father. He who came forth from the silence, meaning that the Father is not going to speak on his behalf, but rather we will speak on the Father's behalf. While he rests in the silence, he whose name is in an invisible symbol. And the symbol is the signs and symbols of all of existence. It is metaphoric. It is metaphysical. A hidden, invisible mystery comes forth. And that sound, all things were brought about through sound. Or it's the light moving across the water that brings about sound. First, through the vowels. And you have them here. I, E, O, U, E, A, O. And each of these seven are spoken 20 22 times, referring to the 10 planets and the 12 zodiac signs, or which are the constellations, also the 22 paths of the Kabbalah. This is the essence of all creation through these utterances, and the various combinations of these bring about consonants when they conflict and contrast with one another. And in this way, the three powers gave praise to the great, invisible, unnameable, virginal, uncallable spirit in his male virgin. Now, the three powers are the Father, the Mother, and the Son. Some call it the Father, uh, Holy Ghost, and the Son. They asked for a power. A silence of living silence came forth, namely glories in incorruptions in the aeons, and dot, 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 aeons, myriads added on dot, dot, dot. The three males, the three male offspring, the male races, and again, the male races coming from the aeons, the pneumatic, the psychic, and the hylic. And those three races reside in all of us. They aren't three individual separate races. It is our free will that determines and our ability to be aware or have gnosis that determines how much we activate those various parts of self. And the more gnosis we have and more alignment we are to the path that the Father and Mother has set forth for us, the more we're lined up with the pneumatic or spiritual nature. The soul nature is much like the radar, taking up the signals that the spirit sends out. And the body then is animates whatever the will that's set within each one of us from the father, mother, son, daughter, that must be carried out, unique to each one of us, an accomplishment, a seed that Christ talks about, and the three coins that Christ talks about. Feel great, doxomedon, aeon. And again, aeon, you can think of being a, an expression that takes time in the physical realm to unveil itself, an era of expression. And when that has finally revealed itself, word made flesh, then that aeon has completed its mission. Doxomedon being the formula the sacred formula that all of the great mages and sages of time have sought after. Uh, even the uh, King Solomon had sought after and written all of these sacred books on. That's that formula, Doxomedon, and the Aeon, with the power of the word of the whole Pleroma. Then the thrice male child of the great Christ whom the great invisible spirit had anointed, he whose power was called Ainan. And Ainan refers to the essence of springing forth, uh, life itself springing forth. That power, that is the ultimate power in all the of existence. It is much in the nature of a small flower making its way through concrete. Gave praise to the great invisible spirit and his male virgin, Baal also known as Yahweh as God. So Yahweh is the tetragrammaton. It's the, the four different vowels that make up four parts or the four elements of existence in the material realm. Then you have three additional that makes for the perfection of seven. But in this physical realm, Yahweh represents the four, and it is pure in its intention, though it may be ultimately reckless. And the silence of the silent silence the silent silence refers to the sacred knowledge that cannot be uttered. And the silence of the silent silence 
refers to that sacred knowledge that cannot be uttered that is not able to be heard, but only to be understood through gnosis. And the greatness that dot dot dot, ineffable dot dot dot, ineffable dot dot dot. So when we have these dot dot dots, it means that the text was not clear. The papyrus was faded or holes were in the papyrus, for example. Words were missing. Uninterpretable. The first one who has come forth and who is unproclaimable, which is wonderful, ineffable. He who has all the greatness of greatness of the silence at that place. The thrice male child brought praise and asked for a power from the great invisible virginal spirit. Christ represents the first, the Jesus man, man also known as the Jesus Christ, that was the essence of the thrice male. He came first in the Garden of Eden, then through Seth, and then through the Jesus man, the Christ spirit, the thrice male. First in the realm of the garden to usher in the physical flesh man into the physical realm out of the garden, and then in Seth to bring forth a way to uh, tap into the gnosis. This is the radar system, the soul man. And then ultimately the Christ elucidating us uh, through gnosis, giving us gnosis about the spiritual nature. Then there appeared at that place, dot, 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 who, dot, 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 who sees the glories, dot, 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 treasures in a dot, dot, invisible mysteries, to dot, 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 of the silence, who is the male virgin, Ya'ul. Now this is a different than the former one, it's spelled differently. U L versus Y O E L versus versus Y O U E L. Although these two are often thought of as the same, Aeon or Angel of Seth. And again, we don't know exactly what everything uh, that is written here is trying to describe because there's so many different pieces missing. Uh, but I nonetheless read it, so we remain continuity. Then the child of the child, S effect, appeared, and S effect is the essence of natura, or nature, which is the child of the child. So the child is essentially when the mother-father comes together to bring about a conception in the three different ogdots, or ogdots. And in this case, down to the physical realm, the child of the child is representing the physical nature. Then that child appeared as Seth, and we'll get to that here shortly, and thus he was completed, namely the father, the mother, the son, the five seals and the five seal refers to the baptism in the five utterances of the, the ritual of baptism that will be talked about in another time in another book. The, and the unconquerable power, which is the great Christ of all the incorruptible ones, dot, dot, dot. And so, again, uh, this is very complex and it's essentially going over the same points because it's like a Mandarbot set. It's like a, a formula that really just repeats itself on many, many levels. It's like the Chinese doll or the Russian doll that you open up and there's another exact doll inside that. You open that doll and infinitely you just keep opening them until they're smaller and smaller. Or you start from the small and then you pop out of that one and then a larger one pops out. So it's that is what's being essentially resoundingly repeated to you to get the understanding that everything is uh, a continual Emanation is pure in all things. It is the essence of the essence. Right now, there are there's one line unrecoverable here, so we don't know what's being said. Holy dot 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 the end, the incorruptible, and they are powers and glories and corruption dot dot dot. They came forth five lines unrecoverable. This one brought praise to the unrevealable hidden mystery dot 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 the hidden. We don't know. We I cannot interpret this, uh, but I'll just read it for again continuity. Four lines unrecoverable. Him in the dot 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 the aeons dot 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 thrones, and each one dot dot myriads of powers without number. Surrounded Around them, glories and incorruptions, dot, dot, dot. Probably referring to the myriad of aeons, the myriad of expressions and essences of, uh, or conceptions of the father, mother. And they, dot, 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 of the father and the mother and the son and the whole pleroma, which I mentioned before, and the five seals. And the baptism, again, is essential in being brought up here because it talks about the returning to the pleroma. That's the essence of everything. And the mystery of the mysteries, they appear, dot, dot, dot. Three lines unrecoverable again, dot, dot, who presides over dot, dot, and the aeons of dot, dot, really, truly, dot, dot, and the, and then four more lines, unrecoverable, dot, dot, and the really, truly, eternal aeons. Then providence came forth from silence. So, so providence refers to the promotion of the evidence of the monad in all things. 
in silence. It isn't something that somebody can describe to you. It can only come through an example or through symbolism or signs or the very nature of the way everything works the logos, the Gnostic gnosis of things, and the living silence of the spirit. And it's literally living because it's the light. And remember, the light across the water is what brings forth the word and the word of the Father and a light. Not the light, but a light. And that a light refers to one packet of light that becomes a she, which in this case is referring to Sophia. Now that's pointed out in the sacred book of John, the secret book of John, but it's not mentioned here in the Egyptian book. However, I will let you know that my understanding, it's referring to Sophia. Sophia dot dot, the five seals which a father brought forth from his bosom, and she passed through all the aeons. Remember, she's the last aeon, which I mentioned before. Four, and she established thrones of glory, myriads of angels. Now, this is where angels come into being. And remember that Sophia brings about the Demiurge, and the Demiurge, and she also brings about the angels, without number who surrounded them, powers and incorruptible glories, who sing and give glory, all given praise with a single voice, with one accord, with one never silent voice, dot, 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 to the Father, the Mother, and the Son, dot, 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 and all the Pleromas that I mentioned before, who is the great Christ, who is from silence, who is the incorruptible child, tell me, oh, tell me, kill, Eli, Eli, Makar, Makar, Seth, translated power, which is really, truly lives, Seth, and the male virgin who is with him, Yo and S effect, the springing forth of life through the elements of the Jehovah God and the S effect, the holder of glory, the child of the child, meaning we are the children of the child, the child being the Christ and the pneumatic child and of the child is the children of Seth and the crown of his glory, dot, 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 of the five seals, the Pleroma that I mentioned before. And then we're just going to read one more section here uh, as there's so much uh, dense information here and so much is missing uh, that we're going to go ahead and have this uh, particular video end a little bit earlier than typical and we'll pick it back up on the next video. But lastly here for this video, there the great self-begotten living word came forth. And that's the Christ, the true God, the unborn physis. I said earlier that S effect is uh, referring to nature, but it's actually physis is referring to nature. So apologize on that. S effect is instead referring to the divine child or the child of the child, mean the child of, of divine destiny, uh, or the child of uh, not even divine destiny, because divine speaks of the realm of the kenoma, but rather the Gnostic child, the Pleromic child, uh, in this case, the essence of the father, mother. And so that's S effect. And then uh, Physis is referring to the unborn nature of things, natura, whose name I shall tell, saying dot 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 A-I-A dot 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 T-H-A Oth, oth. So I don't know what's trying to be said here, but um, that is the name of the physis, the unborn. Who is the son of the great Christ? Who is the son of the ineffable silence? Who came forth from the great invisible and incorruptible spirit? It's referring likely to Seth. Uh, Seth is often known as the son of the Christ, the second son of Christ, the first being the, um, the serpent in the tree through the seraphim race. The son of the silence and silence appeared. One line unrecoverable. Invisible man and treasures of his glory. Then he appeared in the revealed and he established four aeons with the word he established them. And we talked about the four aeons in the secret book of John. And I can't recall their names, but they're the main aeons. You could think of them in the canomic realm as being sort of archangels, uh, but Elilith was one of them. I can't recall all of them. Devatai, I think, was another. And there were two others. With a word he established them. And this is referring to the Christ. And he brought praise to the great invisible virginal spirit, the silence of the Father, in a silence of the living silence of silence, the place where the man rests. In again, in a silence, meaning he did all of this quietly, peacefully, 
from within outward without saying a word, just merely acting it out sacredly within the silence. So this is the, a silence of the living silence of silence, the place where the man rests. And that's where truly there is peace within, listening to that inner voice. That's the sacred space. Two lines unrecoverable. Then there came forth at from that place the cloud of the great light, the living power, the mother of the holy and corruptible one, the great power, the Maratho. And she gave birth to him whose name I name, saying three times, Ayin, ayin, ay, ay, ay. So I don't know what this means. Uh, I can only speculate. It could have something to do with earth being brought forth, but I'm not for certain. Myratho or Miratho, uh, this is referring to the holy nature of um, Seth in this case is kind of what I'm speculating, but I don't f know for certain. But I'm going to go ahead and end it there and we're going to pick back up when it starts to go into the Atomus. That is referring to the living power or the great light. Uh, so then there came forth at from that place the cloud of the great light. And that cloud of the great light, the living power, the mother of the holy and corrupted ones, the great power, the Myratho or, uh, Miratho or Myratho. This is again referring to uh, the holy uh, nature of, of the, this being called the Atomus. I know this is very complex and very convoluted because so many words missing, but essentially what you have here in the physical realm, as we humans, imperfect humans, living in a the physical realm that we live in, we could think of it. We could think of it hierarchically or chronologically, even though this is not actually the way it happens in the pleroma. It isn't even something that you could think of. It's something that's existing always in the past, always currently, and always forever in the future. It, again, is the essence of all things. It's very surreal and dreamlike, but this is really what it's... It's just essentially giving you the formula, uh, the, the, the process by which everything was brought about, starting from the first og, Ogdode to the second, and finally to the third Ogdode, and the three uh, natures or essences of, of the Atomus race, which, again, is the um, pneumatic, uh, psychic, and hylic, with than all of us, and that we're, we're three-dimensional in that sense, so thrice male in that way. How that message was carried forth in the three different visitations by the Christ in uh, carrying forth that message uh, in the garden, in Seth the man, and then Jesus the man. And ultimately getting through the aeons and uh, Sophia being uh, implied, and then the angels and the demiurge, and then uh, now, of course, well, the demiurge isn't quite brought up yet, but we're getting into the Adamus race next. So really it's the same kind of layout that you have as the secret book of John, except that in this case, it's taking it more from the standpoint of not sort of an outside observer, like, look, this happened, then that happened, and um, but more as a kind of formula that is sharing with you. Much of this is missing, so we can't make sense of it, a lot of it, but it's, it's telling you about the essence of the power of silence and word, and how that brings about all things. Again, the light and the, the water. Light across the water brings bringing forth sound, light being silent, a water being the womb or the mother, and then the two coming together bringing forth sound, and then that sound creating something out of silence. Uh, from silence coming forth a new new emanation. That's really what's being described here and how that message was carried through the various different incarnations of the Christ. Then now we're up to the Atomus, which is we humans here. There's the perfect Atomus. That's where we kind of start off and we'll go from there. From there comes the Autogens and the Logos. and that it, Everything that essentially was laid out in the secret book of John is laid out here. This is a much more formulaic description of, of the way things happened. Whereas secret book of John's account is a much more uh, literary sort of account of events. Uh, this happened and then that happened. These events happened. Where this is describing more of uh, the process the formula of how things are brought about. So you could really just think of them um, as the same story, just told through different lens with different purposes. All right, so that wraps it up in video two. We'll pick back up on video three. And I hope to get that one to you a little bit more soon. I know there's about a good three weeks since the first video of the Gospel of the Egyptians.